Hey guys, what's going on? What's up? What's up? What's up? I'm back. I just want to come and briefly show you guys how to read the credit report for TransUnion and kind of specify what these dates mean real quick. And I also want to show you like how it looks compared face to face with the identity IQ. But before I do that, I just want to thank you guys for purchasing my kit, my courses, um, the, my new medical kit. Thank you guys so much. And again, if you guys need any help or any information on my kits or my courses, you can email me. And I also put the links at the bottom of this video. So let's just get into this real quickly, okay? So now, if you are running these reports manually, the first thing you want to look at is like, you know, kind of a history of the account. Like this particular person, they had a pretty good history, but you could tell something happened around this time. So when you are analyzing the reports, just kind of ask like what happened. And you should do this during your consultation. You shouldn't do this like when you already have the client and you're looking at their reports. This should be done before you even bring them on board, okay? So as you can see, and then there are a few other accounts that look just like this, like something happened, but this person, they lost their job around this time. So they fell behind 30, 60, 90, 121, 20. This shouldn't report 121, 20. It should be at least like 150, something like that. So this is an error. Now this date is considered like the first date of delinquency. Now, if you add this January, 2019 plus seven, it's gonna equal to this right here, January, 2026. So that's seven years. So regardless, it's gonna fall off from this date right here, the first date of delinquency. Now, the date of the last payment, which is considered the date of the last payment on this account, is going to affect your statute of limitations, okay? So that's what you have to look at too, the date of the last payment. But if this account had a collections account, which this account does not have a collections account, then you refer to that collections account, all right? Now, this date open, 9-26-2013, that's the history. See all these years, like seven years of history. So if you disputed this account just because of this and it falls off, guess what? Seven years is gonna drop, it's gonna drop the score, okay? Now this date right here, July 2019, that's when the account charged off, all right? So again, pay attention to those dates. And if you look up here, charge off, that's the status. The date closed, that's when it charged off, all right? So now let me bring up Identity IQ real quick. And let me see if you guys could see that. I hope you could see Identity IQ. Let me see, let me see. Okay, here's Identity IQ, guys. All right, now you see how Identity IQ is reporting it, right? Remember the last payment date that was January of 2019? So that's the date of last payment on Identity IQ. So compare those dates, guys. Compare the last payment made, and this is the TransUnion account that I'm talking about, and compare that to the date of last payment, okay? Look at the original account. Now the collections count is separate. This is strictly the original account, all right? Now, remember the charge off date that I said was July 20th, 2019? So that was up here, right? Now, that's the date the account was closed or paid according to TransUnion. So it was closed on that date because it charged off. So on your TransUnion report, that date is called the date closed. And that was the date of like 7-18-2019. So 
it's called the date of last active on here and that's the date right there so that those are two important dates you gotta look at all right now on the collections report let me go back to and union real quick all right so we back on transunion right now as i mentioned this account don't have a collections account because it wasn't sold and it doesn't say that in the remarks or the notes okay so read this stuff like talk to your client and make sure that you know their credit limit was right and make sure you add that date you know look at the estimated date because it should always match up with the first date of delinquency okay the seven years y'all should add up with the first date of delinquency regardless if they paid on this account at a later date or not that's totally separate from statute of limitation statute of limitations that's the date the last date that you made and it could be on this account or if you paid a payment with the collection company then it's going to refer to the collection company now that account these accounts they're still with the original because this person just gave me this account and let me see something i'm going to look for a collections account on here uh, let me see. Okay, I, I'm, I'm, I know for a fact that Midland is a third party and yeah, debt buyer, loan type debt buyer. Okay. All right. So Midland credit, right? Let's just say that as you can see, it was placed for collections. You see that date 26. Now this is for synchrony so i have to go back and i have to look for this original account but you have to read the collection count totally different because they have diff they should have different dates right so this account was placed for collection on 927 2019 right this shouldn't be like this should be accurate like you really need to pay attention for this date because sometimes they can have like a current date but you got to make sure that it was actually placed out on that date right you got to look at the balance and look at the date updated so make sure you look at these dates okay and look at the estimated year 2025 right So just take a look at those dates and make sure they're right. So let me go back to Identity IQ real quick because it's something I want to show you guys on there. Now we're back to Identity IQ. Now you see where it says like account type and so forth, right? So let me go back to the Capital One account real quick. And I'm just going to tell you how to read this stuff. Do, do, do. Okay, I'm back. I'm back. I'm back. Okay. So sometimes that's why I tell you guys that you always got to pull your live reports and, you know, when you're pulling this because. Sometimes this stuff is just hard to read, right? So the date opened and we have determined that that date is 9-26-13, right? So you could always come back to this account on here. This is still the original and look just to see if everything pairs up. It's okay if it's the same month, a different date, as long as it's, it's not like years off. So that's fine. The responsibility is like the individual account. And on here, that's called the bureau code. All right. So the account type is a revolving credit card because credit cards are revolving. So that should be the account type. Now, the loan type, it's a credit card. All right. So it should be the account type detail. All right. So what else we have on here? The pay status should be charged off, okay? Yeah, we know it's derogatory, but 
it's charged off. And I mean, it's pretty much bad. I mean, derogatory and charge off is bad. But here's the payment status also. The account status and the payment status. So the payment status, it should match up with the credit report as charge off. And I know I told you guys that collection and charge off shouldn't be together. And because this account does not have a collection agency on it, that's why they added it here. But I would still dispute it because, you know, you can't have a, a pass due on a collection account. So I would still factual dispute it. It's a tactic, so I would go for it. Now, the terms is monthly, right here, that's the terms. And this right here where I mentioned the account status, because the pay status and the account status is different. Like, this will determine if the account is paid or not. Like, if, let's just say you made a payment on it and it's paid in full or up to date, or whatever the case may be then that would be considered the status, all right? So that's pretty much what you got to do is just make sure that you read your dates and compare it to each other. Like if you're pulling identity IQs and you haven't pulled the live report, go ahead and pull it because you need to make sure everything matches up on down to the account numbers. All right, so everything looks like that. It's matching to what I'm showing. And you even got to read the comments too. And you see some of these dates are not right. The date last active. And remember I told y'all that that was the date closed, like the date that the account charged off on the original because there is no collection account. So this is not right. It said February 2019, but it was really July. So this isn't right. You could actually dispute all of all of this because it's not right. Yeah, I mean, it's not right anyway, because if you look across the board, look, that's not right. You could dispute this too if you want. So a lot of things on here you could dispute. Look at that high credit. Well, high credit, I mean, hey, the balance looks like it's right. So just a couple of items that you can factual dispute. And look how they got it down here. Look how Equifax is reporting. Equifax is reporting. It's making it seem like that in June they fell behind. See, remember I told y'all 120, it should be 150 right there on Experian. See how Experian is reporting it right and Equifax is reporting it wrong. And remember, we was looking at the TransUnion and they don't show anything. So you could dispute all of this stuff, like 120, 120. Look at this. It's like they fell behind, but then they started making payments again. Now, let me tell you something. Compare this on your Equifax, because remember I said that, and see, I don't have the Equifax report pulled up, but remember when I said that when you start making payments again, and then when you stop again, then that's going to reset the clock. So you see how they got this person making payments after July? That's not right because this person didn't make any more payments. The account charged off in July and they didn't make a payment on it ever since, not even with the collection agency. So it's not reporting right. So you gotta compare this if this account had a collection agency that it was sent to. And again, it should be in the comments that it was sold. If it's not in the comments that it's sold, then you can dispute that because the original should have updated this account, okay? And it should reflect that they sold it because they're reporting it 
credit bureau isn't reporting it. They're only updating what the original company, in this case, Capital One, is sending them. So this is what they got from Capital One. So make sure you break these accounts down and look at them. Look at the payment history, 30, 60. And what's that? I mean, it's missing the 90, 21, 20. So you gotta go back and look at this Equifax. We looked at TransUnion, they're not even reporting here. So it's always a good idea and good practice to just look at both because this stuff is being imported on Identity IQ. So it can be incorrect. It can be reporting wrong. So just make sure that you break the accounts down and look at everything, all right? So I just wanted to go over it briefly, and I want to show you guys something else real quick before I go. I want to show y'all this interactive credit report. Like, if you don't remember what I said, then just look at it. So hold on one second, guys. If y'all hear my dog bark, Lord, please forgive me. All right, I'm going to put this in the link. This is like an interactive credit report that you can look at. Like, you could touch it and see what it means and whatnot. It'll give you, like, an explanation. And I just want to show on here, like, see the public records, the collections, and then these are the trade lines, y'all. These are the legitimate trade lines. And I just want to clear something up. Trade lines are just accounts, right? They're your accounts. But if you buy them, it's illegal, guys. It's going to fall off your credit reports in a couple of months anyway if you buy them from anybody. So I wouldn't do it. And you see how, like, okay, you see how the collections separated from the trade lines? So the collections has its own open date, right? So these are the dates you want to pay attention to on the collections account because this is when it was placed. So pay attention to these dates. And then the trade lines, of course, it has its own dates. So pay attention to this. Like I said, I'm going to leave this on this video. So thank you guys for watching. I hope you guys have a good evening, good day, good night, whatever it is, where you are. Take care. I will be back, guys. Okay, I think I'm going to do a video about onboarding. If y'all want me to do a video about onboarding, just put in the comments, um, yes, please. Okay? And then I'll do it. If I get enough yes, pleases, then I will put a video on onboarding. All right. See you guys later. Bye.